Greetings and happy August to you, Elwood City Limits listener. Whether you're on the Patreon or on the free feed, this is Will Young, and it's time once again for us to continue a wonderful tradition here on the show. It's time to recap the Arthur season that was. My co-host Lucas Mancini will be giving his thoughts as well very, very soon as we run down Arthur season 17. Well, we really appreciate you joining us here once again and at the end of a new season in a new month. And pretty soon we're going to be celebrating a pretty significant anniversary for the show. But uh, I'm going to leave that for the next time here. We'll get into that in the next episode, the first episode, talking about Arthur season 18. But we're going to be reflecting on the season that was very soon. Just a couple of things to talk to you. Uh, off the top of things here. As we mentioned in the previous Elwood City Limits episode, there is a little bit of a kerfuffle going on with Arthur's birthday. Now, I don't want to get into it too much without Lucas, and I think we also already said everything that needed to be said. I do just want to note, as we've been talking about in the Elwood City Limits Discord, which you can join if you are a member of the Patreon, that apparently the the quote that's being bandied around is that Arthur's birthday and the um, spin the bottle game is, uh, is it ba- bad for souls? It, it's something to do with souls. It's negative for souls. <laughs> I sound like a Soul Calibur character talking about that just ridiculous like i said i don't want to really like get into it anymore i think we already did i just wanted to make sure to mention that here on the show and we can continue on uh first off i want to read out uh an email here on the show um normally again i like to wait for lucas to be here but this is something that i think we can just kind of keep in mind as we go forward so i will read out one email that was sent to us at elwoodcitylimits at gmail.com that's where you can send your email whether it's to be read on the show or just to be read in private uh whatever you'd like to say this email is from elizabeth formerly z says, Hi, Will and Lucas. While I was listening on the first half of the newest episode of ECL, that's number 205, Binky's Music Madness, about the guest stars of Bang on a Can, you briefly talked about how some of the previous guest stars being either hit or miss. If you guys get the chance, you should rank all the guest star cameos of Arthur, but there are still a lot more guests to come that you haven't gotten to yet. It would be better if you guys hypothetically do make it to the end of ECL to do that ranking. I myself lost count of how many cameos there are on this show, but it's not Nothing compared to The Simpsons. P.S. By the way, who's Dewey? Asking for a friend. Thanks, Elizabeth. I think that's a good idea. And I haven't spoken to Lucas about this, but I'm sure that at some point in the future, we'll likely be doing another ECL stream as we have enjoyed in the past. And that could be a very fun topic to discuss the Arthur guest stars. But like you say, Elizabeth, we may want to wait on that a little bit more because I'm to understand there are some pretty key guest stars that we still have yet to uh, to see even in season 18 hint hint but thank you for that email and we will have more emails for the first episode of season 18 which will be coming your way very soon so yeah let me just quickly break down for you what's going on here uh in terms of the scheduling it's not going to be too much of an interruption thankfully So this that you're hearing right now, if you're listening on the Patreon, you are hearing this in the same week. You are hearing this in the same week that we have recorded and released the episode of ECL Origins that is part of our mainframe entertainment two-parter. And we're talking about Reboot. So patrons, if you haven't listened to that yet, please do. (laughs) We we make these episodes for you, and uh, we really hope you enjoy it. Now, if you're listening on the free feed, you will get a free preview of that very episode if you keep listening after we finish with the season recap. So get comfortable, have a seat, or get started on a task that you've been putting off that you need a podcast for, and you'll be hearing a little bit of that reboot episode before you know it once we get through with season 17 here. And, of course, you will be hearing this uh, a few days earlier. I want to say, like, five-ish days early. 
uh, if you are a patron at patreon.com slash Elwood City Limits. And of course, you'll be getting to hear the season 18 premiere episode a week early as well. And we want to say thanks to the patrons here. Lucas and I extend our gratitude to patrons like Robert Morrison, Kelly Corbett, Baby Show Addict, Addict, Gabby S, Veronica Tram. Thank you to Katie P and to Wolf Lover Zodiac. Thank you to Melissa H, Derek Watson Jr., Nehemiah Unamuk, and everyone else who supports us at patreon.com slash Elwood City Limits. Pay what you want for free, or excuse me, not free, excuse me, but early episodes of Elwood City Limits a week early, and the full back catalog of our sister podcasts, including ECL Origins and For the Kids, a PBS Kids podcast. And that's the uh, everything out of the way there. Let's now go to Lucas to start us off and to talk about the season that was of Arthur, season 17. Hey, everybody. Lucas here from Elwood City Limits, and it's time... Let me make sure my microphone is recording. Oh, yeah, that's better. It's time for the top five episodes of season 17. We are well into the Flash era, uh, and no signs of stopping. Me and Will have been full steam ahead with this season of Arthur. Before I get into the list, uh, because we won't have a chance to talk about this on the main feed, um, the main show, rather, I wanted to... Talk briefly about Paul Rubens, the actor who played Pee-wee from Pee-wee's Big Adventure, uh, as well as Pee-wee's Playhouse, uh, iconic character of children's television, children's cinema, um, and it kind of ropes into what me and Will always talk about, about, you know, what drawed us to Arthur initially is that it is a children's show that treats the audience with immense amount of respect. It's not dumbed down. Um, it's intended for children, but uh, it expects a lot of them. Um, and similarly, uh, Pee-wee's Playhouse, uh, as well as uh, Pee-wee's Big Adventure, a little bit less so Big Top Pee-wee, but I won't speak ill of the man, uh, had are, are, are similar in that you could watch them now as an adult and still get an immense out of, amount, uh, an immense kind of emotionally resonant uh, amount of depth out of out of all of the Pee-wee material. And so, it, you know, it's very near and dear to my heart. It's a big part of why I like Arthur. And it's a big part of why I like the work of Mr. Paul Rubens. And so with him passing away, I just wanted to say that, you know, I'm a huge fan. I would actually say that as an adult, in returning to it as an adult, I think Pee-wee's Big Adventure might be my favorite children's movie of all time. And it's held up spectacularly. Uh, and so I would recommend you watch it, especially if you're a fan of Arthur uh, or, you know, me and Will's taste, uh, I think you're going to get a lot out of it. And you'll notice that many children's movies, for instance, the SpongeBob movie, um, really borrow a lot from Pee-wee's Big Adventure. So something to check out for sure uh, if you are interested. Now, with that out of the way, let's get into the list proper. Top five, season 17. I'm going to start with the 200th episode of Arthur, All Thumbs. Um, I liked this episode because I am a crank, I am a jerk, and I like when Arthur gets mean-spirited, uh, and this one is as mean-spirited as Arthur could conceivably get, and I think it was one of the funniest episodes of the season. Um, goes to show that in season 17, they're not slowing down, Arthur could be as funny as ever. Next, we have Crimes and Consequences. Uh, a George episode. I really liked George investigating his own crime, trying to prove his own innocence, adds a good amount of tension to the plot, uh, leading to my favorite ending of the season, kind of the most dramatic ending sequence of any season of Arthur yet. Uh, and I like how it added to the relationship between George and Binky. Nice to actually see some character development and growth even in this, the 17th season. Next is our episode we watched very recently, Brain Freeze. That's right, a brain episode in my top five. Um, no, the world's not coming to an end. It's just a really good use of the character, and I liked seeing kind of brain lash out at a kind of unjust world as the residents of Elwood City succumb to marketing um, and all of the kind of, <laughs> again, classic nuanced Arthur moral. I never thought they would tackle uh 
gentrification and marketing and these types of businesses and this type of kind of cultural happenstance uh, that we all kind of recognized immediately. And so really cool episode and a really funny episode to watch as an adult. Next, Framed. Great use of Buster. Had to have a Buster episode on the list, of course. It wouldn't be my list if there wasn't. Um, great use of Buster and Muffy. Um, really creative and funny episode. Uh, again, another great nuanced moral that art is subjective and it's about kind of what the audience brings to it. Um, and uh, the best dream sequence. We all love the Arthur dream sequences, don't we, folks? The best Arthur dream sequence in years so recommend this one highly but it still actually didn't make it to the very top of my list no that would be binky's music madness um the biggest arthur meme alert in seasons but that's not why it's on this list uh the reason it's on its list of course is because it's a binky episode and we all know um binky episodes always top my top five list no it's not just that either um it's just a really great episode it's funny it's everything you would want from an episode of arthur uh, again, kind of similar to Framed, uh, explores the objectivity of art, um, of, of, of music, uh, a great use of the Binky character, uh, great use of the special guest band, which I already forget the name of, Stomp on Something. They're not Stomp, not the music troupe Stomp, but they're, they're anyway, they're, they're featured prominently in it, and it's just of the episodes in season 17, it's the one that stands out in my mind the most, the most must-watch one, uh, if you're a fan of Arthur, and especially if you're a fan of Arthur memes. So yeah, that's my list. Excited to see how it differs or how it's the same from uh, Will's, and so yeah, that is my list for season 17. As always, looking forward to watch season 18 with all of you folks. <laughs> Hi everybody, it's Lucas, your favorite co-host from Elwood City Limits. Um, I want to remind you folks that if you like listening to the podcast, first and foremost, the best way to spread the love is to tell a friend who is interested in Arthur or podcasts or animation or hearing about Nova Scotia for some reason. But there's some other things you could do as well. For instance, you can follow us on social media. Twitter is at ECL Podcast. The Instagram is at Elwood City Limits. My pet project, the Twitch channel, which we do live streams on sometimes, twitch.tv slash Elwood City Limits Pod. And we also have a Facebook and Tumblr as well. You can also find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and youtube.com slash Elwood City Limits. That's where Will has been diligently uploading all of the episodes if they're not on your podcast listening service of choice. If they aren't on one of those services, let us know. You can reach out to us on social media or via email at elwoodcitylimits at gmail.com. Finally, the Patreon is where you can find all of our paywall content, patreon.com slash elwoodcitylimits. This gives you access to the Discord, where we have a bustling community, as well as some exclusive videos, audio bonuses, such as commentary for the various Arthur movies and more, as well as some of our additional podcasts for the kids, is where me and Will uh, cover all the PBS shows that aren't Arthur, as well as ECL Origins, where we really talk about any show from our childhood that we want. Uh, and most importantly, you get early access to every episode of ECL. You get to flex on your friends that you're getting it a week early. You can join for as little as a dollar a month at patreon.com slash Elwood City Limits. And now back to the show. Thank you, Lucas. Good to hear from you. Even uh, I, this is the second time I'm hearing from him this week. So it's a double dose for me and it may be a double dose for you as well. Okay. Arthur season 17. I am glad that we are past the point where Lucas and I are no longer prejudiced against the way that Arthur looks and feels now. It was a little bit of a of a of a time overcoming that, getting used to it, but we really did. And we appreciate you guys giving us uh patience as we stuck through it. We made our uh thoughts known about it at the beginning, but I think it is really it's just become, it's 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 different, but not in a bad way. So, uh, when I say that, overall, I think this season is okay. 
I don't want you to think it's because we still have a bias against the uh, the newer versions of the show. As always, I'll cop to the fact that I am uh, very much in the tank for older Arthur, but that's not everybody's uh, era of the show. So we try to keep our minds open as much as possible, and I was very pleased that when the highs are high in this season, they're pretty high. And like all my top five here are episodes that I feel quite strongly about. But then, the you know, of five stories in an Arthur season, there's still 15 others that, to me, were kind of middle of the road, or pretty good, maybe, to quite bad. We're still, we're still kind of doing the same things that many, you've been hearing for many season recaps, the same things that we don't really care for. So, dog and baby episodes, um, focusing on characters that, You know, we've either have a lot of focus on or we're focusing on characters that need a little bit more fleshing out, like, say, the brain, and we're not really taking advantage of that. As I noted in several episodes, we're also starting to see repeated stories going on. There's a lot of episodes that are just basically, we did this episode a decade and a half ago. Let's do it again, but with a different character. And I will also say, they do it differently enough that it's not like... It's not like the Lance Armstrong episode where it's a where it's a, a straight up remake. Which, by the way, when we get to that, in many seasons, when we get to that, we don't have to cover it. That's literally the exact same episode, and we've already talked about it in the original covering of the Lance Armstrong episode. But these are not. I would not call these remakes. Not even really soft remakes. They are taking the same situation, giving it to a different character, and then doing something a little different with it. So. For a show as long as Arthur, I really can't begrudge it too much remixing uh, its older content. Uh, Also interesting that we've doubled up on characters a lot more. So we had the Double Muffy episode. We had a Double George episode. Uh, And I say Double Muffy. Muffy wasn't... That was more of a Buster episode, but she was a main part of it. So it's interesting to see them do that a little bit more. We're also focusing on as I said, kind of less interesting pairings of characters, whether that's the dog and baby or, to me, DW and Bud. Uh, Bud and LaDonna continue to be... It's a bit of a trial by fire for those poor characters. We're trying to kind of find something about them that sticks, and I can see now why we were warned about them going into these seasons of like, oh, geez, they have a lot of of strong opinions out there. And I can see that if you're not a big fan of them, Well, they're here to stay. So hopefully we'll find something about them that we really do like. Um, I do want to shout out something specific to this season and to this era of Arthur as well. We have been critical of the way the animation looks, but when they do their own thing and they find a character that they can really work with well, I think it's great. And specifically, I'm talking about their use of Buster in this season. Frequently, Buster is the character that they have the most fun with in terms of how they animate him, whether it's his expressions, whether it's the situations that he's put into. I just find that they've really figured out how to make that character, how to how to take a medium that is uh, accomplished differently than traditional animation and use it to their advantage to create um character physical takes or reactions or emotions that are um, a little bit outside of the normal and really catch your eye as a longtime Arthur viewer. So I have to give them respect for that. And they are finding different ways to continue the Arthur style in a mode that superficially looks quite different, but in many ways is a natural extension of what they've been doing for years before this. So, again, I'm glad that our initial misgivings about this animation style continue to be challenged or even proven wrong. Let's get to my top five episodes here. Number five, speaking of a character that was doubled up on, my number five episode is The Director's Cut. I really like the focus on George as a main character. For a long time, you know, George was slowly making his way into the main cast, and now it seems that we're amping up the use of him as a character. And 
making it so that you understand that he has different interests. I think that um, I spoke about in the previous season how much I loved the episode where George becomes a baseball announcer. I really responded to that personally, and I also and it's memorable to me. So that's what I remember about George, and I will remember this too. That it totally makes sense that George is a huge fan of filmmaking and seeing the seeing the ways that the craft of filmmaking as amateur as an eight-year-old can do it is animated and conceived is really cool and I appreciated the way that it showed that as I said I just wish we could have seen the final product and to a previous another previous point I made this is a remix of the Arthur episode where they try to make their own James Hound movie but they did it differently enough and with a new character focus that I think it totally justified its existence and it was really fun number four opposites distract it's a good old Arthur and Buster episode, and this is what I'm talking about when I'm saying, like, the great Buster reaction this episode. I got so many screen caps out of this one, and that's what I was afraid of going into the new season is that, well, it doesn't seem like I can get as many, like, wild takes as you can get in traditional animation. If you've ever seen the in-between uh, cells of how The Simpsons used to be animated, and to get them into these wild... Uh, reactions and positions they would have to do these in between frames or like in a Disney movie to like move them in there that looks really weird on its own but it adds to this motion that's going on and it's not so much that but there are still like there's some some good thinking in terms of how to make these characters look funny and even to express in this episode, Buster kind of going crazy. Uh, it was a funny dynamic, and it was just like a really enjoyable episode, and the animation uh, added to it. So I have to give it its due. All Thumbs. This is another uh, remix episode in terms of uh, taking an older idea and then putting it with a newer character. It, because Buster sucking his thumb is very much of the same idea of a lot of Arthur characters, specifically Arthur, not wanting to be seen as a baby. But they did it in a way, again, took full advantage of Buster being a really comedic character, and also made it like a tiny bit dark in there as well. You can listen to our full episode recap of it, but I really responded to that. I thought it was funny, and proved to me that the remix idea of these stories can actually work really well. So kudos to it for that as well. Number two. Binky's Music Madness. This was a late one. I feel like a lot of times we cover an Arthur season and the last episode is kind of like, eh. It just kind of washes off us and then we move on. The last episode of season 17 was really strong and with both of them. But Binky's Music Madness is the one that I think is actually quite important because it's a great communication of a moral that is a bit more abstract and complex than a lot of kids shows might be willing to deal with. And As I've said before, that's what Arthur's at its best, when it's talking about messages that other kids' shows don't talk about. In this case, how to appreciate art. This is something that we struggle with as adults today, and will continue to. It's just a human uh, struggle of understanding. And this was a really great way to approach it. The the music was really good. Uh, The Bang on a Can All-Stars are a very good uh, call-in for guest. It's another way in which Arthur is... There's, there's a bit of an old soul to the show at times. It's, you're not just getting necessarily the most uh, popular actor or like a Simpsons-esque guest star. Like this season, it was like Alan Cumming, which some kids may know who that is, but otherwise <laughs> is a little bit of a of a strange pull. But it was I you know, that was a good guest, and Bang on a Can All-Stars didn't hear of them before, but now I'm much more interested in them. Than I would be, and and I, I'm sure I've said this before too. The best Arthur episodes that we watch for the first time are when I feel like I'm learning something, and I think I definitely did. But number one, it's got to be for me framed. Uh, I really, really liked this episode, and like I said, when this season was good, it was really, really good. Uh, again, love the return of the exclamation point. Uh, but this also had to do with the appreciation of art. There was like a, a funny pocket at the end of the season where it was all about how people see and interact with art. And it was interesting to give Buster, I feel that sometimes characters like Buster are reduced a lot. They're boiled down to, I guess, flanderized, you might say, in terms of like, well, Buster's the 
the funny guy who is kind of stupid. And when he's a bit player, he fills that role. But sometimes I feel like, well, there's more to him than that. And this gave us, like, it helped us to see that Buster is really creative in this interesting way. And also has a vision. It was cool. You don't, it's sometimes really difficult to communicate when characters have, like, a vision of what they want from something. And I think that this episode did it really well and did, executed it in a very creative way. Obviously, they had to create, the animators had to create all of these paintings that Buster was making uh, to symbolize other people. And, again, great message of that art, whether it's a painting or whether it's just something that you're creating. A creative endeavor can mean something more to the person making it or the person seeing it, or rather it can mean something different too. And I just think that these are really great messages to impart to kids. I don't even know if kids would necessarily get this the first time, but they might return to it. They might roll it around in their mind and it might create a seed of something that could be really good for them. So as much as I'm kind of eh, on season 17 as a whole, there's some really bright spots. And I think my top five illustrates that or at least i hope it does so thanks a lot for listening to our season recap here uh as i say if you're listening to this on patreon don't forget to check out the new episode of ecl origins we're very happy to present to you and coming up next week for patrons it's going to be uh well actually it's going to be coming up next week no matter where you are because of the scheduling so coming up next time it's going to be elwood city limits starting arthur season 18 as we talk about the episodes, The Friend Who Wasn't There, and Surprise. And we're also going to be taking a bit of time to celebrate a very important anniversary with you all. But until then, we're going to leave you with a preview of that ECL Origins episode that I talked about, where we are talking about the show Reboot, which means a lot to both Lucas and I. If you want to hear the full thing, you know where to go. Patreon.com slash Elwood City Limits. Thank you so much for listening. And we will see you in Season 18. Reboot was created by four, four gentlemen. Gavin Blair, Ian Pearson, Phil Mitchell, and John Grace, who would go on to be four-fifths of Mainframe Entertainment. Mainframe Entertainment was founded in 1993 in Vancouver, B.C. by the, these four creators and a producer named Christopher Bro. Uh, Blair, Pearson, Mitchell, and Grace were a British-based animation team who came over to Canada. Gavin Blair and Ian Pearson previously worked on the music videos Four, Money for Nothing by The Dire Straits. Oh, wow. Okay. And, and, I, let, I was... and, and Let's Get Rocked by Def Leppard. So, Lucas, those I also sent you to those as kind of like yes. supplemental watching. Those I was wondering have, why you, I, yeah. you were getting me to watch those. And now it all makes sense. That's crazy. I mean, you look at those two music videos, and the Dire, dire Straits Money for Nothing video is legendary in its own right. You uh, Less so the Let's Get Rocked music video. But as much as what we're going to be talking about with Reboot is very visibly aged, these music videos even more so. What did, what did you think of the CGI in those ones? Well, and this will kind of play into a larger conversation when we actually get to talking about Reboot proper. Um, but because the Money for Nothing video is so remedial, uh, I, and I was looking up the Wikipedia article, it says it's one of the first examples of CGI like animation ever. Um, it actually, I feel like, has aged better than the Let's Get Rocked video, where the Let's Get Rocked video, it, it's it's somewhere in between Money for Nothing and Reboot, mm -hmm. and it doesn't quite have the polish of Reboot, but it also, like, the Money for Nothing is so blocky and so remedial that it feels like an intentional art style, and it feels like it's aged better. Whereas the Let's Get Rocked video, you could tell they were... Basically, going. This was their idea of going for more of a photorealistic uh, look, and it looks uh, pretty. It's age, let's say. It's also the. I like how the main character of that music video kind of looks a bit like a, a prototype of Enzo from Reboot, a mm, little bit. True, just true. Given by what he's wearing, and it's also we've reached the point with those types of very primitive CGI where there's 
a charm to them now. And I think yes. maybe more so if you grew up with them like I did. But I think especially with like Vaporwave and the coming of Vaporwave like five years ago, we have a collective nostalgia for these really old looking CGI and I, I definitely do. It makes me, there's an unnameable feeling that I get when I watch this stuff. And it's like, there's only so much that they can do, but it's also really like charming in a weird way. It becomes a different kind of art than what they intended it to be, which was to kind of try and do photorealism as much as possible in some cases. And uh, because they're so limited by the technology at the time, um, uh, surreal would be the term of how a lot of this stuff looks. Like, yeah. It, it, it looks that way because they really didn't have anything else they could do. Uh, and so once technology improved, the, the look of these shows and, uh, and this style of animation uh, kind of went the wayside. And so now, because it's such a distinct look of its own, uh, you're, you are seeing it pop up again in, in different ways. Like you said, Vaporwave, which is in some ways building on nostalgia, um, and then shows that want to look surreal intentionally, like a Xavier Renegade Angel, which yes. came out in like 2007, long after this style of animation became passe, but it utilizes it because it's intentionally trying to be surreal and strange. Yes, that's another, that's another really good example. So... Blair and Pearson worked on these music videos. They wanted to create the first ever fully computer animated TV show, which Reboot kind of is. So this this was interesting to learn about. It is the first fully computer animated. 